Hello and welcome to Hello and welcome to the big Birmingham cook along, guys. On Glimpen Allen, we're here today to cook up a couple of delicious recipes for a really good course. It's been a difficult year for everybody, and the pandemic has posed many challenges to our wonderful city. Whatever sector you're in, we've all been affected in one way or another. Birmingham is a special city that is made up with many close-knit communities who have come together during this time of crisis in true Brummie style to help those who need it most. The number of people sleeping rough on our streets has decreased over the last two years. Thankfully, initiatives across the city to help identify rough sleepers who really need our help support them in a sustained way. Change into action is special because it calls upon expertise of existing services and charities in the area are already working with people on the streets with local knowledge to back it up. Some of the heroes working from behind the scenes are Cypher Fireside, Trident Group, St Basil's, CGL, Aquarius, Shelter, Health Exchange and Spring Housing. Set up in 2017, Change Into Action is a joint partnership between Birmingham City Council, the West Midlands Combined Authority and the Mayor of the West Midlands. Aimed to address rough sleeping in the city, it does what it says exactly on the tin, turn your change into action. To raise awareness of this issue within the region, we'll be cooking up two simple but delicious recipes that can be easily recreated at home, or you can cook along now with us, or you can keep it in the bank and have it online afterwards. I'm lucky enough today to be joined by another great chef who you may have heard of, Danny Page. <laughs> Danny is the owner of Beef on the Block, an award-winning street food vendor based in the Midlands. And we've got some special guests to tell us a bit more about change into action. First, I'll be cooking fish fingers and Danny will be making some delicious steak and chips. So before we get cooking, we're going to introduce a special guest who's going to be cooking along with me today in a chat. He's a councillor Thompson. Councillor Thompson, everyone. Thank you. So Sharon, tell us all about, uh, about yourself. So I'm Councillor Sharon Thompson and I am the Cabinet Member for Homes and Neighbourhoods. So I look after housing, homelessness, bereavement services, localism and a few other bits and pieces across the city. Um, but I am particularly passionate about homelessness because I was a homeless teenager of this city. So it means a lot to me to make sure that we can try and support people but get homelessness down as much as possible. Right, so um, tell us all about Change Into Action. What's the project about and how can we actually help? So Change Into Action is one of my favourite initiatives across the city. And that's because it lets people donate to rough sleepers without actually giving them money there and then on the streets. A lot of people feel uncomfortable with giving people money. We don't always recommend it, but this helps us to give money towards rough sleepers. But 100% of the money goes towards rough sleepers, which is the best bit of it. And it goes to all of those charities that I mentioned before? All of those cha charities can email in and say we've got a person, they need something and we assess it. A few of us get together and assess the applications and then we just award the money. We just keep it really simple. Excellent. Right, so I'm just going to recap on the recipe. Let me just take the old glass off. So we've got um, equal quantities of vinegar and sugar, which we're going to make a gastric, which is going to bring that into almost like a sticky consistency to make our sticky sauce to go with the fish fingers. Sounds awesome. Yeah, because obviously uh, Birmingham is so much cultural, uh, I'm a Brummie, you're a Brummie, um, I've, I wanted to make fish fingers, but I didn't want to do it with ketchup. I didn't want to do it with mushy peas. I wanted to do it with uh, something that sort of really sings about our city, how diverse it is. So we've got a little bit of sort of all oriental flavours going with a taste of Charmsy Wood, which is fish fingers, which is one of my favourite little dishes uh, at home. Same in Yardley. <laughs> Same in yard, exactly. So we've got our, our gastric coming down there. Well, now we're going to pan a the, um, the fish fingers. So we've got some um, beautiful cod, which I've cut into strips and got them down from the local market. And then we're going to put them into flour. Like so now there's a trick, which I always forget as well. You should always use one hand for the dry and the other hand for the wet so you don't get your fingers pan -aid literally pan fingers. So we're going flour. And 
go into the egg, which is just basically egg, splash of water, or you can put a little bit of cream in there if you want to splash out, but just a splash of water, just that, that's an egg wash, and then we put them in. It's looking good. Yeah, and we've got our gastric on there. So tell us a little bit more about um, what we can do. And we mentioned about not giving people change, but if you want to give people money, what is the best way to do that over such, obviously, the, the festive period as well, there's going to be more and more uh, sort of people out on the streets and it's getting cold as well. What else can we do? So um, when it comes to giving people money, I always say it's not for me to tell you how to spend your money. Yeah. However, um, I used to know a rough sleeper. Um, his name was Terry. Mm -hmm. um, and he was known across the city. And um, all of his money came from the public. He didn't sign on. He didn't have a job. 100% of his money came from people that were passing him by and giving him change. And he was a lovely guy. And actually, he had a lot of issues. Um, unfortunately, he he fell into addiction. So he had a drug addiction. Okay. And he passed away from an overdose from um, Black Mamba, which okay. is a drug that can be sold for up to 50 pence in the city. Yeah. So um, I always say to people that 50 pence, you don't know what that could do. It could end up ending someone's life in effect. So um, I always say, try to give to change into action because we will make sure it goes exactly where it needs to go. And so, so how do we how do we get the money to change into action? Is there, is the you know do you go straight do you go online to do it or do you? Um... Yeah, so you can go straight online, tap in change into action. Um, it'll come up the website, and then you can just note that donate online. We are looking at other ways to make it easier for people, especially when they're out and about with their cash point card. So we're looking at things like that. But um, yeah, it's very easy, simple, easy to do. And you know 100% the money's going to go to the correct charities and it's not going to go on drugs. It's not going to go on whatever. Yeah, it's going it, into the right channels. It, yeah? go, it goes to individuals. So like, for instance, a charity, say Cypher, might say, you know, Bob needs, um, I don't know, five pounds to get to his appointments. So we need to get him a little bit of a bus pass. So someone would make the application, would say, yep, OK, that's fine. We can give up to £11 for phone credit okay, for mobile yeah. phones so that the workers can keep in contact with them. And then sometimes you do find that, you know, you know what it's like. You need ID for everything nowadays. Yeah. So to um, open up a bank account, you need your ID. So we would give actually up to £100 to actually help them get their passport or their birth certificate yeah, yeah. so they can get ID and stuff. So, so it's not so it's not just about um, giving money so it's food, it's shelter. It, it goes a lot deeper th th than that. Absolutely. It's stuff that helps them to get back on their feet. We want to give them that start to actually say, do you know what? I'm going to move forward and I can start to do things for myself and support themselves properly. So um, it's just it's not making people dependent on us. But it's actually helping them to have that depend in independence. Independence to, to live their own lives and to, to start back on the right track, I suppose. Absolutely. And that's what I needed when I was younger. So, you know, if it worked for me, I know it can work for other people. And you're talking from experience and, and you want to explain a little bit what happened to you when you was a teenager to, you know, you ended up homeless. Yeah. So I was 16 when I left home. So I um, had a bus stop, good old fashioned brummy bus stop with my okay. mum. <laughs> yeah. um, and ended up, I think it was the day before I started college, becoming homeless. So I, what would we, we would call now sofa surfing. So I stayed with friends for a little bit, um, about four months or so, and then ended up going to a place in the city centre who helped people find somewhere to live. Okay. And yeah. they redirected me to St Basil's. And then you, then you sort of got yourself back on track. And yeah. So what I always say St Basil's. Um, I would say they didn't help me. They invested in me to help me get to where I needed to be. So they helped me to get myself on my feet, get myself into a flat and all that kind of stuff. Brilliant. So, right, a little recap on the... And now you're a counsellor. Smells lovely. Yeah, yeah well, and now you're a counsellor. So from, so, uh, from so a homeless from... teenager to counsellor to looking after homelessness in the city. What a fantastic story that is. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to have a little recap. So we've got our, our fish fingers. So I've gone flour, egg wash... Breadcrumbs, uh -huh. yeah, somewhere around about 180, and we put them straight in, so they're colouring up nicely. I'll just take them out for a second, and then we've got going back onto our sauce. We've got the uh, vinegar, <clears throat> as you can see, vinegar and sugar. We're just going to boil that down into almost like a syrup, so it's like it's called a gastric. So we get a nice consistency. In there, I put garlic, chili, and a little bit of ginger. I love ginger. <clears throat> 
As you can see, that comes from sort of nice, sort of sticky consistency. A little bit of ginger in there. Not too much good. more. It's not good, isn't it? It does. We've got our fish fingers, which well, I'm just going to re dip them. They've been in there for about three or four minutes. And then we've got a little bit of lime and chili, which I'm just caramelizing on the side just to give that aroma when we pour the sauce on with, with, with the fish fingers. Oh, it's delicious. And then we can finish the sauce. We need a little squeeze of lime. A splash of soy. See, I'm vegetarian, but when I was younger, I used to love fish fingers. It's, and for me, fish fingers, but when, when I spoke about the charity and, and, and what they do and stuff, and how would I feel if I was homeless? And I think I wanted to cook something that reminded me of home. And, you know, yes. coming home from school and... That's the sort of thing that I would miss if, if I was fortunate to, to be homeless. Is food is that massive thing, and I think fish fingers, you know, chips, beans, it's all that it's sort of thing. Yeah, so I want to do that. Difference. But I wanted to do it with a brummy twist. So we've got our fish there, a little bit of salt. I have, I have to say, when I was younger, my mum never made sauce like that, so I'll be having a word later. Well, you're going to try yeah. some as well. So, right, so we've got a little bit of soy in there. I'm going to finish that with some chopped coriander. Let me start to serve the dish. The current down. Do you cook much yourself, Sharon? Yes, I do. Both me and my son both cook a lot. He did cooks more. You, did you teach him everything he knows? Yeah, we did, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> right, just, but no, he, he loves to cook, he does. Right, a little bit of coriander in there. Right, let's start to serve the dish. So, got our fish fingers. Nice and crunchy. That was really quick, wasn't it, and easy? Because you were chatting away, I was having fun, that's what it is. Oh, there you go. You know, it's got fish fingers there. See, so, thank you for letting me in the kitchen. <laughs> right. A little bit of garnish just to go on there. A little bit of watercress to go on. A little bit of rocket as well. And then sauce. Sweet chili, aromatic, brummy sauce. So Sharon, how do we find out more about Change Into Action? So you can go onto the website, Change Into Action, or if you're on social media, you can go on Twitter, which is Change In and the number two action. And it's also on Facebook as well. Fantastic. Well, thanks for being with us. And this is my fish fingers with my sticky sauce. Woo! Right, so cooking up next, we have Danny from Beef on the Block. <laughs> and we've got another special guest who's going to tell us his story, and this is Dave from St Basil's. So, Yay! <laughs> so Danny, tell us what you're cooking and crack on. Yes, yeah, so I'm cooking steak and chips with a chimichurri sauce. Uh, it's an Argentinian sauce, basically uh, part of pasty, coriander, garlic, chili. It's a bit spicy. Crack on then, let's, let's, let's right. get it going. I'm so starving. we'll start with the chips. Um, I've already pre-cut these. You can use Morris Piper chips, uh, potatoes rather. Uh, I put them in cold water with salt in them. It just releases the starch out of them, makes them really crispy. So you want to set your fryer at home at about 160 uh, for your pre-fry, which we'll do right now. Right, while you're doing that, Dave, can you tell us a little bit about you and about your involvement with St Basil's and how yeah. you've come to sort of work with, with St Basil's? Yeah, so I, uh, I've i been at St Basil's since July this year. The reason I'm at St Basil's is probably because of my lived experience through homelessness itself. So like, I, my, a little bit about my journey is that uh, I'm 16 years old, I'm from a good family, stuff like that, but through whatever childhood traumas I had and stuff like that, I picked up class A drugs at 16 okay. and that kind of created mental health problems, physical health problems. I was in and out of homelessness for many years uh, and it just went on and on. It was just that cycle, that ongoing cycle, yeah. you know, that revolving door. And uh, just the years went by, went by again even more and hospital visits, crime, prison, you know, it's, it's all been there for me. And uh, December... 2018, you know, it's kind of like enough was enough. It was another hospital visit and, you know, I just knew things had to change. I wasn't brought up that way and uh, went into treatment myself and I'd done a, uh, a few months treatment, 
finished, been, done a detox and treatment, and then went into a recovery house. And then I volunteered at a recovery uh, recovery centre. Yeah. Uh, but then I just decided that, like, I wanted to work with young people. You know, it's like working with adults. One, it was, one, it was, still made in a little bit if I'm honest. But working with young people, like, I, if I'd have got what I've got now earlier, you know, mm. I would think things would be a lot different. So, like, I knew a lot about St. Basil's and what they do. Uh, so I applied to be a volunteer there. I uh, got the volunteer role there. I'm a homeless relief engagement worker. That's turned into paid work now. Uh, and St. Basil's is just like what they do for young people is amazing. They've been going like over 40 years. Uh, last year, we engaged with over 3,500 young people. We house over 1,200 young people. And we're not just, we don't just work with, with the homeless, you know, homeless reduction, get them off the streets, yeah. get them housed. Homeless prevention, we work with them to keep the tenancies up. Uh, I work a lot with uh, care leavers where we do activities with them, uh, changing to action. The funding has been amazing for us. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of water sports and I, I, I use their funding to take one of my young people wakeboarding. I've also done some indoor rock climbing with one of them. And then we've done the usual bus passes, TVs, yeah, yeah. bed linen, that sort of stuff, you know. So, you know, St. Basil's is, is changing lives for me. And, you know, like I say, if I'd have got that when I was that, you know, maybe things have been different, but this is my journey. and. and and I'm here today, and if I can make a difference for them, I will do. Yeah. Truly amazing from uh, being at St. Basil's and getting their support to now working for them, which is brilliant. Yeah. Now, Danny, I know that this uh, sauce that you're making yeah. is special. It's special in one way because it tastes delicious, yeah. but it's special in another way. So why don't you tell us about yeah. that? Yeah, so we basically sell this jar at £6 to customers, and every pound uh, probably goes to St. Basil's to charity. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, sitting quite close to me as well. I've got younger brothers and sisters on the Elder Sat Sticks, any youngsters out there that need help with not being homeless and stuff is quite yeah it means something to yeah. me you know course, yeah. so that's why i started off with doing the donation of the pound fantastic now yeah. on another point you've yeah. got two delicious steaks you can eat. you want to talk us a, re a recipe um little recap so we know where, yeah. where we so are so i've just uh, i'm still pre-frying my chips at the moment i've just put some butter in a pan uh on a high temperature i've got a vet steak going in so what's bavette then just just so we know if bavette is like a fancy word for a french it's, it's, it's a french word for skirt steak basically okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. um it's quite a it's one of the cheaper cuts of meat that's why mm -hmm. i'm using it really but it's really really tasty if you cook it right you cut it right it's perfect yeah, yeah and it's very versatile you can use it in stews curries spaghetti bolognese, but we're just using it as its true form at the moment. With this delicious sauce as well, yeah? With this chimichurri. Yeah. I put no garlic or anything like that whilst cooking it because that sauce is so overpowering. Mm. It's very, very garlicky, so I don't put okay. garlic in the butter or anything like that whilst I'm cooking the steak. Dave, tell us how uh, people out there can sort of involved to try and help people like St Basil and the uh, change into action uh, how can they get involved so for, for one St Basil's you know you can visit our website you just google St Basil's you can find out a lot more information mm -hmm. we're always looking for volunteers there's a donate page you can donate uh, similar to what change into action wow. does you know uh, we've got a youth hub you know if anyone wants to find out more you can phone them up and ask questions over the phone mm. as well you know we look for donations for food parcels clothing mm. you know all sorts of stuff you know anything what can help a young person you know we'd be grateful to have it toiletries toiletries bits and pieces yeah to yeah. place damage yeah. out everything like that would be a great help for them fantastic and change attraction if you don't add to that, that will eventually go yeah. into charities like South like Wales, yeah, yeah, as well as us, CGL, uh, Spring Housing, all yeah. those sorts of people. Yeah. Fantastic. Danny, how are we getting on? Yeah, get you there. Where are you going? <laughs> so, right, well, I've just pre pre fried my chips. Now I'm going to turn up the fire to 180. Okay. So we can crisp <laughs> them up once we put them back in. Uh, we're going to make the chimichurri sauce now whilst the steaks are still cooking. The steaks smell fantastic. Yeah, it does. Yeah, smell good. Good. Smell That's why chef. this cut of beef is so good because it's so tasty. Mm. Like fill it, you can't get the taste of this kind of this cut. So with the chimichurri sauce, I always start with um, garlic. If you don't like garlic, don't use this sauce because 
is extremely garlicky. So would you say this is a romantic dish, or would the garlic sort of sort of stop that romance quite immediately? Well, I wouldn't say no to somebody that had eaten garlic. <laughs> <laughs> So then I add salt uh, and sugar. And this will actually break up the garlic like into a paste almost. Uh, so if I just... And you prefer to use the pestle and mortar rather than use a blender? I normally, so when I'm trading, um, obviously I'm serving about 500 people at a time. So yeah. I would actually use a blender. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, do but that, I, do I that. just thought it looks cute in here. It and does, yeah. Oh, this is one of the first purchases that I uh, made when I first started making some money uh, through trading. So I thought, why not? It's what started me off in this business. So we're going to carry it on. And obviously with the, with the pandemic, um, it's obviously affected my restaurant and you guys as well, because obviously you do yeah. lots of festivals and stuff. And yeah. it's, obviously it's been, it's been tough, hasn't it? It's been really, really tough. I mean, the good thing is we had a lot of support. We've just... Um, one of the events we had just before COVID was Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, yeah. And I had bought so much meat and there wasn't a very good turnout whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so I had to freeze a lot of my steaks. And we're talking about two and a half grams worth of meat. That's a lot, that's a lot of meat, yeah. But we put a post out to the public, um, to all our followers, just saying, look, guys, this has happened. Um, and... Every single person. Well, we well we sold it all to, to all the customers. Yeah. Yeah. Me and my uh, boyfriend, we were driving around Birmingham, Wolverhampton, Coventry, delivering to state states, <laughs> frozen states too. So everyone really pulled together and helped us out um, there. So your your lovely fellow is over there. What's he his name? Is. This is Harry over there. Harry. <laughs> hey, Harry. So <laughs> what I was saying. So when you're driving around with this uh, the, to deliver the steaks, yeah. you obviously you've got an ice cream van makes the music. Did you have something that just moved? Uh, no, so I do actually have I mean, a... come on, it's... <laughs> where is everybody today? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, yo. Um, I actually do have a little van. Have you not seen my van? No, 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 no I haven't seen your it's van. An, no, it's, no. A, it's an old school J7 van that never wants to start up, ever. Oh. Ever. <laughs> the AA men actually have my number in, like, their phone. Like, What's as a, a J7? contact. It's a J. It's an old school. I think it was like a, was it like an army van or something, Harry? What was it? A horse? Sorry, not an army van. It's like a horse carrier okay. uh, box. But it it it's a nightmare to drive with. Right. Tell us what we got in that. Uh, right. Oil. So we've got, got garlic. I've just made it into a paste now with the salt and the sugar, breaking it down. Yeah. We're now going to add. This is parsley just here. So I'll put that there. So you want the majority of it to be parsley. A bit of coriander. Uh, fresh red chilies. You can use green chilies too. You can put more or less. It depends. Yeah, on I mean, how I, you want. I yeah. really like it spicy. So yeah, okay. I also use chili powder as well cool. just to give it a bit of a kick. I mean, some people don't like that, but I do. So that's what goes in it. Um, and just a tad more sugar. Then I use rapeseed oil. Oh, I need to <clears> refry <throat> these chips. Bear with me a second. So the chips are going in now. So what temperature are they going in at? 180. 180. Oh, so crispy. nice and crispy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's just double check. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Um, so we're going to now use some rapeseed oil. I use that rather than olive oil because I feel like olive oil just kind of overpowers the taste of it. And it's a bit more grassy, a bit more earthy, yeah. rapeseed oil. Um, there we go. So if you wanted to, just yeah. for those guys at home, and yeah. for you, Dave, as well, yeah. if you wanted to do your chips in the daytime, get yeah. them, pre-blanch them, yeah. have them on a tray in the fridge. So when, when the steaks are cooked, take them out straight into the fryer at, say, 180, 190, to crisp them up to save a bit of time. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I also add red wine vinegar too, just to give it a little bit of a kick. But you can just taste this as you're going along to how you like it. Yeah. Um, but as you said, I normally do use it in a blender. But I'm going old school. I like it. I like it. What do you think, Dave? I think it would uh, be easier with a blender. It's a really, really, really popular sauce. It's like the sauce of, of Birmingham at the moment, in the Midlands. Yeah. Like people yeah. go crazy just for absolutely it. absolutely love it as well. Uh, we were trading at, uh, in Chadsley the other day. 
And I'm not joking, the whole the whole country turned up just to buy the chimichurri sauce. Which is fantastic. Yeah. But you go to other places like um, Liverpool, where I trade, they don't eat anything else apart from peppercorn. It, that chimichurri is like a no-go. Yeah. Well, this is, this, is what cra- uh, this is what's great about Birmingham. We're so sort of multicultural and we've got yeah. so much influences going around yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And this is, this is our taste buds, isn't it? We like yeah, that exactly. little bit of spice. Exactly, yeah. Okay, right. So chimichurri is basically done. We're now just waiting for our chips. Which are getting there. So just touching with you again, Dave, obviously, yeah. now you're working there. Yeah. Um, I suppose your experience and knowledge is, is, is obviously priceless, isn't it, for those guys that are coming in that have been in the same position as you yeah, and yeah. are looking for that guidance, really? Yeah, it's just like the, it's it's all about the identification with them, you know. Uh, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't hard at first, you know, no, when you no, see no. someone who's in the same sort of position what you was years ago. Yeah. So it's kind of like trying to not get that emotional attachment, but also be there for them, you know. And, and I guess when they hear my story and what I've been through and my homelessness and et cetera, et cetera, they can, like, you know, they can they start getting honest with you and start sharing more with you. Well, they can relate, they relate, can relate yeah. to you that you've been there exactly, and, and now yeah. you're in a, obviously in a, in a yeah, great place yeah. now. I've been able to yeah. give that knowledge to and, and help people. Exactly, yeah. I mean, uh, what we do as well with the young people is that when they're so far on as well, we do like life skills courses and employability yeah. courses and stuff like that. So uh, I know a few young people are great would love to come and do some uh, voluntary work with Danny when she's back up and running yeah. again. Yeah. So like, definitely yeah, put, put that on you while we're on camera so you can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's cut your cheeks. I wouldn't say no anyway. <laughs> right, how are we getting on? Right, so we're basically ready. Okay, So excellent. I want to get <clears throat> my big mortar. So I like to season my steaks afterwards. Um, so I've had actually two resting uh, before we started cooking earlier. And that's obviously um, an important part, especially with this cut of meat. Oh, yeah, but you ne- it needs to be rested. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it has got a slight, slightly more texture than a sirloin or a fillet. Yes. But the flavour really overtakes when it comes into that yeah, department. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I like my steaks really heavily seasoned, so just... Okay, so... So you want to do this like medium rare for this kind of cut of meat. Anything like well done, it's not going to work. When people ask for it rare, I'm like, no, you can't have it rare either. It just doesn't work. I had one customer once asking it for a blue. And I love (laughs) blue if it's a fillet. But with this cut, you just... And this cut cut for me reminds me, I worked when I worked in France when I uh, I was obviously a a lot younger. uh, And... On my day off, I'd go down to a small little bistro and I'd have a uh, bistro, I'd have the bavette and chips. And theirs was always slightly under, yeah. uh, but it still was delicious. It was my day off. That with chips, <laughs> it, I mean, that with chips is just fantastic. You yeah. Know? yeah, it's fantastic. Right, so now we're going to plate up. Let me just give it quick. Cookie looks lovely as well, Dave. What do you think? You, you happy with that? I, I'd, I'd eat it. Yeah, well, you're going to? I know I am. <laughs> so, yeah, so you've do got you, that. Do you like no, garlic? I love it. love garlic, yeah. All okay. the food, all the do food you like I, spice? All the food I cook at home, it's like I cook a lot of chilies. Uh, yeah. I, um, spice. I make made my own homemade burgers as well. I put a lot, so much chilli powder in there and garlic powder and stuff like yeah. that. Like, uh, so you'll be yeah. happy to know that I actually put um, garlic. We season now the chip with garlic salt too. Perfect, yeah. Chips look fantastic as well, nice and crispy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So salt, salt, uh, soak them in that salty water yeah. for an hour. Then you're cooking them, drain them off, cook them yeah. at 160, and then back in at 180, 190, yeah? Yeah, and then a bit of garlic to make sure my oven is off. Excellent. A bit of garlic salt. I mean, I have cheated. I've just got normal salt and garlic granules in here. I mean, if you want to make them into fat chips, you can also... I mean, me, um, especially my boyfriend, he likes the fry skinny. Okay. So that's why we have that at home. But you can have them thick as you like. And just like you were saying, on the pre-fry, cook them for longer. And then on the after-fry, higher, higher temperature. Excellent. Um, right, so now we're ready to plate up. Let me just move these. So am I doing two dishes or are we having one? Well, well Dave, two, you're let's, Dave let's, needs let's, two, two, two dishes. I don't know what you're having. Do you know what? Let's just, shall we make a mighty portion? <laughs> 
Yeah, make a mighty portion. There we go. Okay. Yeah. And then just literally lay out the steak. So all them juices dripping down onto the chips as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know what you would have done. You would have saved the juice from the frying pan and poured it all over. Let's, let's not go there. Let's not I mean, go there you know, we, nearly today. we nearly fell out over that. Yeah, so. we did. So let's <laughs> yeah. not. Okay. And then just. I don't want any beef with you. <laughs> hey. They're here. I mean, I was, waiting They're here. For, I was waiting for that to come. They're here. Okay. And then just literally <laughs> just pour. Jimmy, it looks so pretty on a plate. Oh, it's delicious. It, it looks beautiful. Yeah, that looks lovely. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Danny, tell us what you've got. Yeah, so we've got some home cut chips, um, vet steak, and some chimichurri sauce. Lovely. <laughs> right, so, Dave, tell us how can we get involved into Change Into Action? So, Change Into Action, uh, find them on the web website. Uh, log on, donate on there, and you know that 100% of all the money you donate would go to worthwhile causes to help helping the homeless. Brilliant. Dave from St. Basil's, guys. <laughs>